Hey, I want to thank you for all the positive feedback surrounding our glyphosate testing of water filters. We put the results out there on naturalnews.com and glyphosate.news. We did mass spec testing of water filters, popular filters, water pitchers and sports bottles and gravity filters to see how much glyphosate they would remove. And we, you know, we use mass spec instrumentation in the lab. It was a really great experiment. And we published the results, published the video for people to see. And the feedback has been tremendously positive. In this podcast, oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen that video yet, just go to either naturalnews.com or glyphosate.news and search for the water filter glyphosate lab test. You'll find the article and the video. Uh, but, but this podcast here is to give a little bit more background about how we do these tests and how we came up with the method to conduct this testing. It took us over two years to develop and refine this, this method. And, you know, a lot of people think that lab testing is very simple. You just take a liquid and you somehow hand it over to an instrument and then the instrument looks at it and gives you an automatic accurate result. Boom, like instant science. Well, it doesn't work that way at all. It's very complex, actually. And most of the glyphosate methods that have been published in the scientific literature, and we've tried most of them, by the way, uh, they don't work. They don't work because, well, number one, a lot of the older methods use what's called post-column derivatization, which requires this processing step following the chromatography to alter the glyphosate chemical using other chemical compounds and so on to make a new chemical that will show up more easily on a mass spec instrument. It's a very difficult and toxic process. It uses a lot of toxic chemicals that are very, very harsh, bad for the environment. So I immediately, from day one, I said, we're not going to do that. Well, so when I asked around my scientific colleagues and said, so what can we do that does not involve post-column derivatization? They, they kind of chuckled and said, well, there's there's not that much out there, but there are some new columns that people are playing with, and there's, there's some chemistry people are playing with, and so on. So here, they recommended some papers. They recommended some, some columns to try. So originally, we tried what's called a Taurus DEA column made by Waters, which was one of the most highly recommended columns. And we were able to get some peaks out of that, but that column is highly, highly susceptible to contamination with metal ions from the flow path of your chromatography instruments. So even trace amounts of metals, which can also be found in your solvents, the solvents that you're running through the system, water, acetonitrile, and so on, methanol, what have you. If they're even slightly contaminated with metal, the metal ions, uh, they latch on to the media inside the Taurus DEA column and they create horrendous tailing effects. And the tailing effect is when, like your peak starts out good on the front side of the peak, but then the back side of the peak falls apart, fades out, gets smeared over several minutes. You can have like a four minute peak or a five minute peak, which for, for the most part, chromatography software won't even consider that to be a peak. You can't even really work with it. It doesn't, doesn't integrate correctly. So we played with that for months. I don't know how many months, quite a long time. And it, that was really the best recommended method that we could find. But then somebody gave us a hint about another column that was a custom-made column, some kind of hybrid chemistry, which to this day, I don't quite understand all the, the chemistry of it because you, you have to have like 20 years of experience to know what this chemistry is doing, you know, to be a specialist in chromatography chemistry. That's a, that's a lifetime of study, basically. But what I know is that when you order one of these columns, you have to wait like two months to get it because they have to make it for you. It's not an off-the-shelf thing. It's not a regular factory-run column. Like most columns are just off the shelf. You buy it, you get it the next day, right? These columns, you order it and you wait. You sit there and wait for two months. And then you're lucky if you get it. Well, this column, this mystery column, turns out that if you use the right pH with it, the right chemistry, it produces astonishing, astonishing chromatography peaks 
for glyphosate, the likes of which we have never seen in any other method, not even close. The, the chemistry of the column is just incredible. Now, the metal ion contamination of the solvents can still cause problems. So you have to know how to eliminate those metal ions, and there is a process and a chemistry for achieving that. So we have to do that every once in a while, but especially if we hit this column with a very, very high concentration of glyphosate. Like if you're hitting it with, let's say, 10 parts per million, you are going to get some nasty carryover effects unless you know how to clean out the column and eliminate the metal ions and whatever glyphosate is chelating itself to the metal ions as well. Because glyphosate is a chelator. And so if the metal ions are contaminating your column, the glyphosate tends to latch on to those metal ions as well. And if you don't get rid of the ions and you know the, 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 the compounds now that glyphosate is forming with them, then you're going to have you're going to have nasty echoes and shadows of glyphosate coming off your column and screwing up your subsequent samples. So over time, with a lot of experimentation, we were able to create what I think is the best method that I've ever heard of, and it's vastly superior to anything that I've ever seen written up in any paper, the white papers, the science papers, everything. And so I told my team, we are going to write a science paper on this method that we developed. Now, it was, it's, it's tweaked, you know, we learned from a lot of other people, so I don't want to claim 100% credit for it. You know, we, we stood on the shoulders of other people who were trying experiments as well, but we have come up with something that is so amazing that I just have to share it with the world. It's better than, better than anything in the scientific literature. So we're going to publish this paper and we're going to, well, first we're going to write it up and we're just starting this process right now of gathering all the final data to write up the paper. We're going to submit the science paper to uh, various scientific journals and to get it published, just like I've been published before. And we're going to, we're going to publish this paper on this really uh, robust, incredibly linear, uh, astonishingly replicable glyphosate quantitation chromatography mass spec procedure. It's really a big deal. And I mean, no wonder it took us two years, over two years, to get this nailed down. The, the, the complexity of it is insane. And by the way, the papers that were out there were recommending like insane amounts of formic acid in the, in the mobile phase. And we came up with a way to use about 1 40th of that much formic acid. And formic acid is very, very expensive. You can pay $2 per per milliliter for it. And it's, there's a shortage of it right now for some reason too. It's like everything you need in the lab, there's a shortage. You know, you need helium? Oh, there's a shortage of helium. You need formic acid? What do you know? There's a shortage of formic acid. Seems like everything we need, there's a shortage. But so we came up with a way to use 1 40th the amount that was recommended by some of the other papers and still get these amazing results and also have a very fast clean out in less than five minutes and the run itself is only a six minute run. And it is astonishing. Now the real credit goes to the, the people that make this column. I mean, we, we are just the scientists that are trying to sort out the best way to use it. But the miracle of all this is found in the column itself, which is made by some freaking chemistry geniuses somewhere who have dedicated their lives to chemistry and obviously are like the best in the world at what they do. I could never hope to be that good at chemistry, and that's, that's not my goal. I'm not a theoretical chemist or anything, but us being able to use their, their chemistry has given us an incredible tool for public safety and transparent science, and that's how we were able to use that to find the results of the effectiveness of water filters in removing glyphosate. We've got 16 experiments now on the board, literally written on a whiteboard at the lab, 16 different experiments with glyphosate. We're going to work through all 16. That's my goal. So the water filter is just one. There's 15 more. And we're going to be using the same method on all of them because now we have this. It's, it's pretty amazing. Cool stuff. And if you listen to this whole podcast, you're probably kind of nerdy like me. So you'll be really intrigued to find out what's coming next. So I'll give you a hint. We're going to be testing something that you drink <laughs> to get inebriated. Yes. Um, like your, your favorite Super Bowl beverage. We're going to be testing that. 
So that's a little hint. You probably know what it is. It's coming up soon. We'll see how much glyphosate is in the stuff you buy at the grocery store. So stay informed. Keep reading naturalnews.com and glyphosate.news. Thank you for your support. Before we get into the next segment, reminder that this is brought to you by the Health Ranger store. We have a fish oil alternative for those who don't want to take in fish-based products, many of which are heavily contaminated with mercury. We have a product called Ahi Flower. It's made from plants and it's a fish oil-like supplement with many of the same essential fatty acids and the same beneficial effects on your body, but it's made from plants. It's lab tested for heavy metals, glyphosate, and microbiology to make sure it doesn't contain E. coli or salmonella or anything like that. So check it all out at healthrangerstore.com. It's good for your health and it's clean. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.